bearing seed. To you, it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make pork chops paprika with some sauerkraut, and it's just, oh, so good. We're going to do roasted tomatoes and broccoli. We are also going to have a, a radish and cucumber salad on the side and then some wonderful garlicky rolls to finish off our meal. So let's get started. Actually, we're going to get started on the broccoli because this is going to take longer than the pork chop. So what I have on my lined baking sheet is just one head of broccoli that I have cut off the little flowerettes. And you can cut them into, um, you know, as big or small a pieces as you like. Then I have one can of stewed tomatoes that I just drained some of the liquid off. And I'm actually going to chop those a little bit because they are a tiny bit big and I want them to be bite-sized pieces. So if they, you know, if the pieces are a little large, just chop them a little bit. Leave some of the liquid, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna drizzle the broccoli with a little bit of olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, you can use canola, that's perfectly fine. Then I'm gonna add my peppers, not my peppers, my tomatoes, just right on top for a minute. Wipe off my hands here. Then I'm going to add some salt and pepper just sprinkle it over the top. I'm going to take my hands, clean hands, just kind of mix all of that together, spread it out into one even layer. Now I like the tomatoes to be kind of on top of the broccoli. Some of them obviously will be on the sheet pan, but try to get as many as you can on top of the broccoli. And then top that with some grated Parmesan cheese, as much or as little as you like. And then we're gonna put this in an oven and we're gonna roast it till the broccoli's tender. Take about 20, 25 minutes or so. So let's get this in the oven. and just let that go and that will roast. It'll kind of caramelize a little bit. The tomatoes, the natural sugars in the tomatoes will caramelize and it will be yummy. So now that that's cooking and that's just hands off, so easy and quick. Let me wipe off my board a little bit here and get the tomatoes off. Let me put this in the sink. What I'm gonna do is start on our pork chops. Now, I have a large skillet here that I am going to preheat. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil or you could use vegetable oil or canola oil. I just happen to have this handy and nearby. I'm gonna let that heat up just a little bit. Just gonna, let me get a, another knife here. I've got an onion that I'm going to slice, and I'm gonna brown the onion in that. I love pork chops, and one of my favorite foods in the world is sauerkraut. And I don't know if you know this or not, but sauerkraut has bacteria in it. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's actually, as they call it, gut-friendly or digestive friendly bacteria. So it aids in digestion and it's extremely good for you. So I'm using some sauerkraut. If you wanted to be really adventurous, you could you do this very same recipe, but use Korean kimchi in it and that would be wonderful. Now rem remember that kimchi can be hot and it can be 
um, a little strong in flavor. Not everybody likes kimchi. I happen to love it, but that is a definite strong flavor. But if you wanted to substitute kimchi for the sauerkraut, you could, or you could even do a mixture of half and half. Now, I'm going to let those pork chops, or pork chops, um, onions kind of go for just a few minutes. Oops, one fell out. Let that kind of brown over that heat, and we will work on our pork chops. Now, I have boneless loin chops here, but you could use any kind of a pork chop you wanted to. If you wanted to use tenderloin, you could. Um, you know, Trim the silver skin, cut it into uh, about two-inch slices, and then take a meat mallet and pound them to be a little thinner, the, the tenderloin. But I'm just going to use the regular... Um, boneless pork loin. Now what I have done is I took a little small paring knife and I made a couple of slits through the fat cap down to the meat. The reason being, if you've ever had your pork chops curl on you when you're cooking them, there is a small silver skin underneath that. I'm going to trim a little bit of this fat off and show you what I'm talking about here. You see this very, uh, the lines go this way. That is the silver skin, and that contracts, and that's what makes your pork chops curl. But if you will put a couple of slits through that, you won't have curly pork chops. So that's just a little hint for you. So lay them out on a cutting board, and then we're going to take some paprika. This is a sweet paprika mixed with just a pinch of cayenne or hot paprika if you have it. And I'm gonna coat these pork chops because they're pork chops paprikash. Paprikash means paprika. I'm gonna turn them over. And I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Gonna coat them with the rest of the paprika that I have here. You want a, I don't know, a teaspoon, tablespoon or so of paprika, depending on how many pork chops you've got. You just want to kind of spice up both sides. So for those of you that think that jar of paprika in your kitchen is only to put on top of deviled eggs, mm -mm. it is, has a flavor and it's really good. And there are different types of paprika. There's uh, sweet paprika, hot paprika, and smoked paprika. And feel free to use any kind that you have in your kitchen. I'm gonna wash my hands, watch these onions. I'm gonna take a quick break and when I come back, we're gonna get the onions out, pork chops in, and we'll start on our salad. I'll be back in just a minute. Now we are back and to our onions, we're gonna add just a little bit of garlic. The reason I didn't add that earlier is I don't want that garlic to burn. So I just wanna add that for about 30 seconds is all. And I'm actually gonna take these out of the pan and put them aside for just a minute. because I do not want that garlic to burn. We're actually gonna brown these pork chops. So set that to the side. Might need to add a little more oil. Be careful, because it might splatter on you. And then you wanna add your pork chops to your skillet. This is a one pot meal. And again, feel free to use whatever kind of paprika that you have on hand. We might need to do these in two batches. Let's take this one out. I think I'm gonna need to do this in two batches. We're gonna brown our pork chops on both sides then, to our onion mixture, I'm gonna stir in some caraway seed. 
Let me show you the caraway. It's one of my favorite little herbs and or spice. It's actually a spice, it's a seed. Herbs are the leaves, spices are the seeds. Um, caraway is a very distinctive flavor. If you've ever had rye bread, rye, you know, the Jewish rye or just rye bread, come seeded or unseeded, but I like the seeded kind. That flavor is caraway. Bavarian sauerkraut has caraway in it. So I'm going to add, I like it, so I'm adding a little more than a tablespoon to my onions. And then I have one jar of sauerkraut. Now, I prefer the jarred sauerkraut or the sauerkraut that comes in the bags in the um, deli section, maybe where you get your sliced lunch meats and cheeses and things. Sometimes they will have bags of the sauerkraut or the jars. It's not as processed. It doesn't have as much heat on it, so it doesn't kill all the bacteria. That's the reason I like and I'm kind of funny. I like shredded sauerkraut as opposed to chopped sauerkraut. It's a matter of personal preference. Whichever one you like is fine. I'm just going to turn these over for just a second and brown the other side real quick like. And then we're going to take those out and add these in and brown both sides of these. Okay. All right, now all I've done is browned the pork chops on both sides. They're not cooked through. I'm going to add my onions back to the skillet along with the entire jar of sauerkraut. Woo! Let me get this out. The liquid and all. Don't drain your sauerkraut. Just put that in there. Now, I'm going to stir all that together. And I'm going to put the pork chops in it. They don't have to be single layer. I'm just going to put them over top, along with any juices that come out on the pan that you've got. Don't throw those away. That's flavor, my friends. I'm going to put these pork chops back in there, and we're going to essentially braise them because I'm going to cover this, and what will happen is the moist environment that they're going to cook in creates a steam in there, and it makes the pork chops much more tender, and that splattered a little grease on there, but that's okay. Cooking is messy. Just clean it up. That's the way it works. So, let me wipe that up just a little bit now. I have a mess, but you know what? I'm a messy cook. But it tastes good in the end. Put it on like medium to low heat and let it go for just a few minutes. And then we will get started on our side dish. Now remember, we've got our broccoli and tomatoes roasting in the oven. We've got our pork chops and our sauerkraut there. Now what we're gonna do is make a little refreshing fresh salad because you've got you know soft broccoli coming you've got softer foods in here with the pork chop and the sauerkraut you need crunch cooking is as much about texture as it is about flavor in my opinion so what i'm going to make is just a quick little um side dish for you of radishes and a cucumber in a sour cream dressing. Now, I prefer to buy my radishes in the bunch with the leaves still on them, as opposed to the bags that you can get. Sometimes um, the bags, I think they, they, you know, they dry out because they're kept longer. They just, to me, don't taste as fresh as the ones with the greens on them. So trim the top and the tail off. I've already got a few done. This is one bunch of radishes. And this will keep, you know, for a couple days in your refrigerator. And I'm just going to slice my radishes kind of thin. I love radishes. If you don't like radishes, you could substitute carrot, maybe some shredded carrot, or you could just do cucumbers. It's up to you. I like the peppery bite of the radish. So 
I'm going to slice those just kind of thin. And then I have one English cucumber that I have washed. I don't peel these because they don't have the waxy coating on them. These are the ones that you find in the grocery store that have that shrink wrap around them, the, the, the plastic wrap around them. So this is not coated. So I just wash it and I just leave it on there and slice it. I'm gonna turn that down just a little. I don't want that to burn. Slice it kind of thin. If you wanted to cut them in half to half moons, you could. Let me just do that so I can show you what I'm talking about. If you get halfway through like I did, just stack them up, cut them in half. That way you're, you've got a little bit of a different shape in there. It looks prettier. So just cut your cucumber in half. Now, if you have a problem with cucumber seeds, cut it in half, take a spoon and scrape that part out. But, you know, with the English cucumbers, the seeds are so small, I don't think it's a problem for most people. But if you need to remove the seeds, by all means, you do that and just cut them. When you cut anything like this in half, put your flat side down on your board. That makes it much more secure and much safer to cut. Fingers tucked back away from the blade and then just cut your cucumbers. I love cucumbers. It's refreshing and they're full of water as well as some vitamins and minerals. So you're getting hydration too. Cucumbers are very good for you, in case you didn't know that. Just get these in there. And we're going to make a dressing. You could use all sour cream, which is what I'm doing today. You want about a cup. Or you could use half sour cream and half plain Greek yogurt if you wanted to. Either way, uh, with just a little bit of salt in my sour cream. I'm gonna add, I don't have any white pepper, but if you have white pepper, you could add white pepper and then you wouldn't have that black flake, but I, I just don't have any, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna add fresh dill. You can use, dill is one of those herbs that I find you can use dry or fresh. It dries very well and keeps a lot of its flavor. And dill goes hand in hand with the caraway that we're using, the flavors. So just get most of those thicker stems out of there and then just run your knife over it. I need a little bigger knife to do that, like this. Oh, I love the flavor of dill. And I'm gonna add quite a bit of dill because that's a predominant flavor in this salad. Chop it up. And add that to your sour cream mixture. Stir that together. And then put that in your cucumbers. And there you go, refrigerated, and it'll be ready to go when you are ready to eat it. I'm gonna take a quick break, just clean up, check my broccoli, and when I come back, we're gonna make a delicious roll to go alongside our pork chops. I'll be back in just a minute. Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Hello. This is your Hello. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Hi, honey. What? Now? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. 
Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. My girl. You know, my daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. My name is Sam Leitch. About a year ago, I had a heart transplant. My life was saved on the last day that I was supposed to be on this planet. And now I know what a miracle feels like. I don't know who my donor was, but that person saved my life. Over 130 million people have already signed up, and they have one thing in common. They want to save lives. Please sign up to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. You don't want to miss your chance to save a life. ready to eat we're gonna get our bread done now in this small skillet I have a stick of butter and I'm gonna add some garlic to it just chopped garlic because this is gonna be a garlic bread and I'm just going to melt the butter and let that garlic kind of soften and mellow just a little bit now I did take the lid off of the pork chops to let some of that liquid evaporate. So that's what that's doing. Now, we've got um, a loaf of rolls. You can use any kind of rolls that you like. I like these uh, Hawaiian sweet roll type things, but you can use anything you want. I've got a serrated knife and I'm just cutting them in half. And what I wanna do is take the bottom half and put it on my uh, pan. And I'm going to take this butter. Let that, I think that's about done. Melted. And I'm just going to put this, just drizzle it. You can brush it or drizzle it with a spoon. Make sure you get that garlic distributed evenly. Mmm. Could add some herbs if you wanted. Could add whatever you wanted to, really. This would be a delicious little meal if you wanted to do this and then add maybe some chopped ham or turkey and then bake it. Would be a great little light lunch or meal. Add a salad and you're done. So there's the garlic. Now we want to put our Roll tops back on, and let me find my foil. I'm actually gonna cover it, the bread. Well, we're gonna use this much foil. <laughs> we're just gonna kinda, we can do this. Didn't realize I was that low. If that happens to you, do this right here. You just kinda wanna encase that bread, really is what you wanna do. Then it's gonna go in a 350-ish degree oven, whatever you've got your oven set at for your other foods. Put this in there for about five minutes or so. Just kind of let that bread warm up and the garlic to finish doing its thing. Now, we are going to have some parsley and I'm gonna chop this parsley. You could add this to the uh, butter mixture if you wanted to for your garlic. You could sprinkle this over top of the cheese and the broccoli before you roast it. Parsley really does have flavor. It's not just for decoration. And I prefer the flat leaf Italian parsley. The only thing I will caution you, be careful in the store 
because flat leaf Italian parsley and cilantro look a whole lot alike, taste completely different. So watch to make sure that you are getting flat leaf parsley and not cilantro. Unless you want cilantro. Then you can get your cilantro. Now, our broccoli's done. So let's add a little bit of that to our plate. And remember, we've got our wonderful salad. We're gonna add some broccoli. Mmm, that looks good. And we're gonna serve up our pork chops. Let me get a, mm, let me get a thing here. On our plate. Now remember, you've got this wonderful onion and sauerkraut mixture in the bottom. And then our radish and cucumber salad. It should be good and chilled at this point. Oh, I could just eat this sauerkraut all by itself. I love it. One of my favorite flavors in the world, sauerkraut. There you go. And we'll just chop, put some of our fresh chopped parsley over it to add a little bit of green. Mm, so good. Matter of fact, we'll just sprinkle that right in that pot. Mmm. Now, if that doesn't scream delicious, I don't know what does. And our wonderful bread, which is coming shortly. Oh. All right, now here is our wonderful little chilled cucumber and radish and sour cream salad, and here's our bread.